All right, well, it's been raining all morning. There's a break in the rain now, and it's supposed to be, supposed to, there's a chance of rain pretty much all day until like 7 p.m. or something, so not sure what I'll be able to do all today, but everything is soaking wet right now. I mean, I'm glad that it rained. We needed, the, I needed the rain, so I didn't have to water everything again. And it's much cooler, which is good for the uh, carrots and the lettuce and all that. I'm going to pick the okra really quick before it starts raining again, so at least I can do that today, for sure. And then maybe check the temperature of the compost, just so I know what that is. Well, I got the okra. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight okra today, but it's literally raining again, so. So it is raining, which is actually good. I mean, the rain is good. But it does mean that I can't, there's not a whole lot that I could do. I mean, I could go out in the rain. I should like invest in like a rain suit or something. But I don't know if I could take you with me. The camera, my camera is water resistant, but it's not really like waterproof, so I don't wanna. I don't want to go too crazy in the rain with the camera. It's, I don't know how I don't level this out. So, I did some more research on the whole ants on the okra thing, issue, problem, maybe not problem. And so I think from what I read, it's really just fire ants that are the issue. If you have fire ants on your okra, they could actually be doing damage to the flower pods and then stunting the growth and then the growth of the the actual okra won't might not happen. I don't think the ants that I have on my okra are fire ants, but I need to check and see for sure when it's not raining and when they're when the ants are back out there. Um, and if it's not fire ants then supposedly they don't act, these ants won't actually be doing any destruction to the oak to the production of the okra I don't know I'm gonna have to figure out what those ants are doing because I don't want to just kill them mindlessly like because they could be beneficial some of these ants eat and ki kill and they I don't know if they eat them but they kill off the harmful insects that could be doing some of the aphids that could be doing damage to the plants some of these ants will kill them because the ants are like territorial basically for if the ants are getting something positive out of these flower pods for themselves and it isn't actually hurting the flowers then i'm okay with it but also if the, if the ants are doing that and then some aphid some negative insect comes in then the ant will just kill that thing which is good for me because that that insect might have damaged the the okra so I don't want to just kill them mindlessly. I want to see if, the, if they're a beneficial ant, then I want to leave them there. I don't, I don't, they don't really bother me being there. It doesn't hinder me from harvesting the okra or anything. So I don't mind them being there if they're beneficial. I just need to figure out if they're actually harming the production of the okra. Uh, and if they are, then I can get rid of them. But if not, then I don't, it's fine. I don't, they, they're probably going to be more beneficial than they are harmful. So I would like to, be doing that right now, but it's raining. And the ants aren't really out there. I looked this morning and they're just, all the debris that they left is still there, but none of the ants are there. I guess when it's raining, they don't, they're not gonna be out doing whatever they wanna do, but, or maybe they've moved on. <laughs> that would be beneficial, I guess. As you can see, the sun has come out. It's about 3.30. In the afternoon, the sun's out now, and I'm out here looking at the okra, trying to figure out if these are fire ants or um, some other type of ant. And I'm no ant expert, but it looks like to me that these are not fire ants. I don't see any red on them. I'm probably just going to show like a 
some pictures and some videos that I just took of these ants and hopefully I can get somebody who knows a thing or two about this to look at this because I, I'm over my depth of knowledge here. And the limited amount of research that I've done, I mean, I don't know. And people have talked, people, people talk about ants on okra, but this is just weird. Like there's so many of them all over these flower pods, but there's also these little tiny things that I don't think the ants are leaving here. So maybe it's another aphid that's leaving there, leaving stuff there and the ants are eating those aphids or eating the, the eggs from the aphids or something, which would be a good thing. And that's why I don't want to just kill them if they're actually doing me a favor. I mean, in the future, I can just spray the ochre plants to begin with before the, the ants even ever get there and prevent these aphids from even getting onto the ochre plant. And then the ants won't have a reason to get on the ochre plant. But if the ants are doing me a favor, then I want to leave them there. That's my thinking anyway. I, I just don't know. It doesn't look like they're going into any of the, the okra and it doesn't look like they're going into any of the flowers in a destructive way. It doesn't look like they're going into the, the flower pods either. They're these little tiny white caterpillar looking things. Let me actually see if I can get a picture of those on my phone and then look it up and see what those are. Because maybe those are the things that are um, leaving behind these little eggs or something. And then there's another caterpillar I saw somewhere too. And man, there's so much little, there's so many little tiny insects that you just never even notice until you really get close. Like I'm like, my face is like right next to these things trying to see these ants and see what they're doing. And I'm also spotting other little tiny insects all over the place. So, uh, okay. Well, good news. I have a much better understanding now of what's happening. Bad news. The ants aren't harmful in and of themselves but they are actually for some reason in a beneficial symbiotic relationship with the aphids that are all over my okra. So there are, there are aphids all over the okra and those are not good for the okra. And the, that little white, this little white, I'll show you this white little caterpillar looking thing, larva is actually the larva of um, a species of a ladybug and it is one of the most beneficial species of ladybug to have in the garden and I've seen quite a few of them out here so that's good and they actually eat the aphids the problem is supposedly these ants protect the aphids for some reason I'm not sure why I have to do more reading I'm not sure if we even know why they protect the aphids by trying to run off these these larval uh, ladybugs and they also supposedly have even been found to remove the infected aphid bodies like, okay, so if you if I go and I try to spray an insecticide on all of these, supposedly there has been research that has found that the ants remove the infected aphid bodies in, in an attempt to preserve the rest of the aphids, I, which is crazy. Like, why are they doing that? I have no idea. Okay, so see, this is it's really a conundrum because the thing is, if I spray an insecticide, it's probably going to not only kill the ants and the aphids, but also kill... What the heck? This dude is... Okay, so that is the larval ladybug. And I, don't, I guess it was just eating an aphid or something. I'm not really sure what he was doing. But those guys are what I want. Um, but I don't want the aphids or the ants, really. If, they, if, if it was just the ants here by themselves, that would be fine. But the fact that the ants supposedly protect these aphids is, is not good. But the problem is if I go to, a, if I put an insecticide on to kill the ants and the aphids, it's probably also going to kill these uh, ladybug larvas. And that's not good because you want those. I mean, those having ladybugs would be great. They, they fly around and they eat the aphids. Um, so, I don't know. I, but holy, there are aphids everywhere. Those little, the little remnants of whatever I, whatever it looked like the ants were leaving behind, those are aphids. And they're all over the place. And they blend in. They look just like they're just part of the, the, the pod, like part of the flower pod. And it's crazy. They're tiny. They're underneath all the leaves. 
and I and I, there's even I, I see some of the eggs underneath the leaves are all over the place. And now that I'm here, like noticing this, and I'm sitting here, there's also a whole bunch of other predatorial insects who are feeding on these aphids, which is great. But there's just so many of them. They're all over the place, and they're on many of the okras, and okra plants. Now, I mean, like, and it's evidenced by where the ants are. See, the ants supposedly are, want these aphids for whatever reason, and so anywhere the ants are, there's probably these aphids here too. There's little, there's little grasshoppers all over the place. There's these little flies that eat these aphids. There's those, the ladybug uh, larva that eat the aphids. I mean, I have a whole system here, but it's just not enough. These, the aphids are just, they, they reproduce way too fast. There's tons of them. So, I do have some insecticide that I can use. I'm gonna do some more research and just see like how detrimental these aphids can be if I allow them to continue going. I mean, there's always that question of like, will nature balance itself out, right? Like if I just let this go, will the predatory beneficial insects kind of increase in number because there's so many aphids here to where the point to where they balance out the, the aphids? Or does that just not happen? So I have an inclination to believe that the issue often is that we try to intervene into nature and when we intervene, that not only, you know, it may solve the problem temporarily, but not on in the long term. So like if I just let this run, and maybe I lose a couple of, or a dozen or whatever of okra, but I allow the beneficial predatorial insects to come in and rebalance out what is currently an unbalanced um, system in the favor of the aphids, then that would be a better long-term solution because now I have a whole host of beneficial predatorial insects that are living in my garden and taking care of all of the negative insects. Whereas if I just go ahead and kill everything, then I'm, only, I'm also killing all the beneficial ones as well. And then the aphids, which were probably extremely resilient, would just come back later. And now I don't have this whole host of beneficial predatorial insects. So I, I don't know. I'm gonna have to do some research. I mean, these things are crazy. Like, I don't, has anyone really, how well has someone tested that, you know? How well have they documented it? That's, that's, that's the question. And I would love to do that. I mean, maybe I could, I could experiment. I could try it. Like next year I could grow. It's really hard to do that though, because if I grew several rows of okra and then another several rows of okra in another location and I applied insecticides to one of them and didn't apply insecticides to one of them first of all it's a very limited experiment because it's just one season like I would need to do it over many seasons but also the the one that I didn't apply the insecticides to if the the beneficial predatorial insects grow in number well they're also going to go over to the other place even though it may not be in the same location they'll eventually find that other place too and so I, I don't, that's a really hard experiment to run All right, just looking like the compost today is not going to quite be 160. Um, it's definitely going to hit 150 here. It's just, it, 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 you saw it, it accelerates, it doesn't accelerate, it raises really quickly when I first put it in, but then it kind of gets slower at the end, so I don't want to make you sit there and watch it the whole time, but yeah, it's right at about 150, a little bit over 150 right now. So that's 10 degrees cooler than yesterday. When did I turn it? Two days ago? So for about 24, for about a day, maybe a little more than a day, it was, a, it was over 160 degrees and now it's down to 150. I think that's good. I don't think I want it to sit at 160 for too long. So my, my whole idea is I come out every day and I test it. And when it hits, I, I think I'm just gonna start at 140. When it hits 140, and maybe I should let it go longer, I don't know. When it hits 140, I, I turn it again, unless that's like tomorrow. If that's tomorrow, I might wait a little bit. Um, but at some point, when it hits 140 or 130 or whatever, I'm gonna turn it, I'll pull it out and put it back in. That'll get it back up to 160. And then I'll keep doing that until it no longer even goes up to 160 because it's mostly done decomposing. Um, and maybe at that point, it wouldn't even get to 140. It maybe it would start dropping under 140 and then I know that it's close to being done. Let's see if I can actually finish today the job that I was trying to do yesterday before it started raining on me. I know something.
Sure. Not sure if it's raining or if it's just the wind pulling the water off the trees, but there is a dark cloud, but the sun's also shining. Who knows? Anyway, there's another nice bit of brown to go in the compost that is developing. I still think it needs a little bit more brown. Um, I'll do it again another day, just add it as I go on. That should be fine for, for now. That was the first time I've seen the rabbit in like over a week, or maybe two weeks. Mm -hmm. 